great show tonight. I can't wait to have a cosy little head-to-head -head with my guests. You know, like Vladimir Putin chatting to Emmanuel Macron. <laughs> but there's Putin. Can't quite see Macron. Just pull out a bit. Bit further. Bit further. Bit further. Oh, 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 there he is! <laughs> yeah, that is, that is your social distancing right there. <laughs> Uh, apparently, it's all a diplomacy thing, yeah. The bigger the table, the more respect you have for the person you're meeting. Here's our Prime Minister meeting Macron. <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it, yeah. Lift the shoes, Frenchie. <laughs> but, of course, it's been a very big week for showbiz. Uh, did you all watch The Brits? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a great show. Uh, Adele picked up three awards, Ed Sheeran, Ed Sheeran picked up Songwriter of the Year, and two backing singers picked up Anne-Marie. <laughs> oh, poor Anne-Marie. Hey, it worked for Madonna. It worked for Madonna. <laughs> uh, the night was a real family occasion. I mean, when Little Sims won her award, she brought her mom up with her. Ah, oh, sweet. Aww. And Sam Fender was there with his great-great-grandfather. <laughs> uh... <laughs> you know, running away. Hey, but the undoubted star of the night was Adele, right? Yeah. <laughs> she... She stole the show when she performed her album track, I Drink Wine. Oh, Adele, finally! You've written a song about me. <laughs> uh, talking of Adele, let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll have music from the brilliant George Ezra! As the global hit Bridgerton returns to our screens, please welcome Queen Charlotte herself. It's Golda Rocheville! Wowza! Kel Frockalore! He's been in films such as Moulin Rouge, Bridget Jones, Harry Potter, Paddington, and won an Oscar for his role in Iris. It's the great Jim Broadbent! drama The Duke, It's the Dame, Emmy, Oscar and Tony award-winning Dame Helen Mirren, everybody! <laughs> Woo! And she sold over 100 million records and has an Oscar, a Golden Globe, 12 Brits and 15 Grammys to her name. It's a warm welcome home to the wonderful Adele! <laughs> Everybody! Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah! Uh, welcome all, uh, Golda Kelfrock. Thank you. I know, it's fabulous. Yeah, it's, drama. Yeah. Come yeah. with the drama. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm on telly, I'm wearing a frock. Uh, <laughs> very good. And Adele, congratulations. Hi. Thank you so uh, Tuesday much. night, three Brits. I know. Oh. Yeah. Do they, do they give you the wink? Do you know at all? I knew I'd won one of them, not going to lie. I knew I'd be <laughs> the other two. No, I didn't. Oh, nice surprise. I know. Yeah. 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 I'm really yeah. happy to be And I don't know if anyone will notice on Tuesday night when you were sat on the piano singing, uh, microphone in right hand, I felt left hand didn't move as much as normal. It seemed heavier <laughs> <laughs> than normal. Uh, is there... A, um... As if I would ever tell anyone if I was or wasn't. <laughs> I'm the most <laughs> fluffy, though, isn't it? It's very... Like, yeah. it, I have to say, <laughs> as a casual observer, it looks like you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that as a yes. We don't know, we don't know. And uh, welcome back to Dave Helen Mirren, everybody! <laughs> You kind of think in showbiz everyone knows everybody, but I think apart from backstage, you guys haven't met before. No, no, we haven't. Oh, so. But but there is an odd connection. I'm not sure if you know it, Helen. On this show before in the past, Helen, you've told that lovely story about when you came back from the Oscars and you're in the baggage reclaim. Yeah. You know the story I mean. Yes, absolutely. And 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 they all wanted to see my Oscar, so I got it out of my bag and held it. I was it up in there. And... No. I was in there. I was on that flight. I was Tell on that you flight. Home. Really? Yes, I was. That's oh, what that I was that gonna is tell funny. you coming up the stairs. Oh, that is brilliant. She had no idea I could tell, so I was like, Oh, let me save the story. I'll tell it out there. I was there, it was before even my first single even came yeah, out. Yeah, it was you know, well, well that was one of the sweetest moments of my life, I amazing. have to say. It was very, very lovely. Everyone was yeah. so proud no, of it. No, when you yeah. talk about that, I was like, that, you, that, that was one funny. of the people clapping. That is funny. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Nice, yeah. Though, right? oh, yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and we're thrilled to have the great Jim Broadbent on the show for the first time. <laughs> 
Jim, you're one of those actors. You've been in so many films and lots of them big, big favourites. When people come up to you, what are the ones they always want to mention or do you know when they approach you, oh, this is a Paddington fan or this is a Bridget Jones fan? Only Fools and Horses, really. Really? <laughs> really, more than anything else? More, almost more, and it goes across the generations. So kids now, uh, young people who weren't alive when I did Only Fools and Horses, oh, Slater, oh, he's my favourite. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that is probably the, the most common one. And, uh, Jim, in Only Fools and Horses, obviously you played Roy Slater, but that wasn't the part they wanted you for. No, originally, um, I was second choice for Del Boy. Wow, wow. Yeah. The first choice was N. Rytel, who was not around, not, we didn't see much of N, but he was first choice and he didn't fancy it. I was second choice and I was doing a show in the West End and I, mm. I couldn't cope with to having two parts, two jobs. <laughs> it was too, too difficult, so I said, I said no. So, um, luckily, <laughs> David Jason was available. <laughs> <laughs> My greatest contribution to British culture is not being available. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, first time, welcome to Golda Rochevelle. Hey! <laughs> and, and I love what's happened to you and Bridgerton because presumably, when you got the part of Bridgerton, you just thought, oh, it's another gig, it'll pay, you know, keep the lights on for a, another yeah. few months. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I'll play the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, and out. But, it, I mean, it has turned into such a huge It's thing. amazing, isn't it? 82 yeah. million households or something on Christmas Day. Wow. Congratulations. God, you look like a queen sitting there. Yeah. You know. Thank you. You have a queen... You, you, you absolutely have a queen in you. Oh. You, you, <laughs> you. Um, yes. But Just isn't it fun My partner being would queen? say something different. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it fun being queen? It's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah. It's great. I mean, it's great. I love it. Yeah. You, know, you have the biggest dresses. You have the biggest wigs, biggest wigs. The biggest crowns. Yeah. The biggest jewels. It's, <laughs> it's just great. Everybody bows. Yeah. Everybody bows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Adele. Brits. Tuesday night. Congratulations, as I say. Thank brilliant, you. brilliant night. Yeah, um, yeah. And yes. And I love. I love how huggy you were. Every award, big hug. Whoever gave it to you. Oh yeah. Also, I just I love Mo Farah. So I was like, I was re I've never met him before. So I was chuffed. Did a little curtsy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Idris, I love as well. It was just yeah. All everyone was just amazing. So I just wanted to hug them all. Oh. So yeah. So, so yeah. And those speeches. Is that really inappropriate because of COVID? I wasn't going to say anything. Uh, <laughs> I think getting COVID off Adele. That's already a good story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the speech is also really lovely, and I thought that because you know people write personal albums, they write personal books, but I loved that you acknowledged in your speech that it's not just your story; it belongs to other people. Yeah, no, it was important to me, and my son's old enough now; he realizes you know what's going on, and his friends don't talk about me, but like you know the older siblings, the fans, and stuff like that. So he definitely realizes, and he's curious. And I don't share too much of him, just because I don't know how much is appropriate to share. Yeah. I don't know. It's my first time doing it with a kid knowing as well, like... Um, but, yeah, they're my, they're my little soulmates, Angelo and Simon. Like, you know, just because we... You know, our family's separated, we're actually fucking nailing it. <laughs> we're doing it really, 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 really <laughs> so, well done, yeah. Yeah. What is, if, if anyone missed it, uh, should we treat ourselves to a little clip of... Uh, you know, I fluffed me second line. Oh. Not many people seem to have realised it's meant to be how... <laughs> 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 how can we both become a version of a person? But I said, how, how, how can we both become a Persian? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm tripping over my words and I'm shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think we've got, got that clip. Yeah, we don't, God, we don't, we're not that bit. We're not that bit. We were just... Some of you being brilliant. Here we go. Oh. Stop trying to be... Uh, and sort of you feel like it's the best of times and then the worst of times because yes. of Vegas. Yes. So let's talk about Vegas. What 
happened? How did it end up coming so down to the wire, like the night before? Yeah. How did that happen? I tried my hardest, right? I really thought I would be able to pull something else together, you know, in time, and that was why it was so last minute, which, you know, I regret, obviously, that I, I kept going with it until that late in the day. Um, but it, was just, it just wasn't ready, and there were lots of different reasons of why. There were COVID, you know, delays with pieces of the show. There were some things that weren't going to be arriving until day of the show, so therefore I would never be able to see them or approve them. Um, so, that, that, you know, there were lots of delays for that. We, our manpower was down because... I'm doing all this testing for my, you know, for my crew and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And our carpenters who are there to fix and change things, you know, there and then, we had like hardly any able to come to work. And it just would have been a really half hour show. And I can't do that. I can't, that, that doesn't, people will see straight through me up on stage being like, she doesn't want to be doing this. And yeah. that's not, I've never done anything like that in my life. Yeah. And I'm not going to start now, you know, so obviously gutted. But we're working our asses off literally 24 hours a day. I don't want to announce a new set of dates until I know that everything will definitely be ready. Yeah. Can you imagine? You don't have to get. Also, I'd have to go on and do a show that ain't ready, and I'm, I, do, you know, I don't want to, but I have to. Ooh, yeah. But but also, I suppose when we think about you, we think about you know this voice, and you kind of think. If it was just you, a piano, a light bulb, and a mic, yeah. people would have been quite happy. Was, it, was that ever a possibility that you'd just go out and kind of go, look, guys, there's nothing? There's def... <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there's me! No, there's definitely... There, there is a... You know, there, is, there, there was a part of the show that was like that, but I, I, I feel like I've always had a really great incline with my show. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I'm really comfortable in theatres, which is one of the reasons I'm so bloody excited about doing the Coliseum. Yeah. And then I nailed my arenas. I don't care what no one says. Like, considering <laughs> that I'd always done theatres. Like, and I went on every night loving doing my show because I knew it was a great show, like, yeah. you know? And then I did stadiums and I did it in the round, which even my team were, like, worried about. I thought for a solo artist, I thought, bloody nailed it. I worked the whole room <laughs> in the round. <laughs> But it was also like it was it, it was just it was a stadium show, but we'd been on tour for so long with you know with the arena tour and stuff like that. And um, I don't want to. I just I'm not going to try and do a stadium show in, in yeah. a theatre, but it's Vegas. It can't just be me on my fucking guitar. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be something else happening, you know. Not completely. Not not the whole show stripped back. No. And uh, and so you would say you are planning to do these. They are going to happen. Absolutely. They are What's hundred percent happening? OK. Yes. And, and how long might fans have to wait? I'm not asking for a commitment to a yeah. date, but just, you know, if, if you have a ticket, are you holding on to that for They're years? They're absolutely happening this year. Oh, this year? Oh, 100%. Oh, fantastic. Have you been reading the papers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. I believe, no, they're, they're I believe everything in the papers. They are absolutely happening this year. Oh, OK. Oh, perfect. Yes. Oh, very good, very good. I want a baby next year. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. <laughs> I have plans. Imagine if I had to cancel shows because I'm having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got plans next year. They better fucking happen this year. <laughs> that is some gestation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Tuesday night, just going back to the Brits, you must... That journey, you must reflect on your journey, cos when you were a little kid, obviously you went to the Brit school, but even before that, you were a little kid watching the oh, Brits. Oh, yeah, I, I've always loved the Brit Awards, yeah. It's crazy, it's crazy. And I kind of have to switch off from, from that, otherwise it's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it freaks me out a little bit. But... I love there's a picture you posted of you as a little girl uh, with your Spice Girls poster. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I was also really into Five. Do you remember Five? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that a I microphone know. or a sausage? No, no, or a no, what? A sausage. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think it's the Spice Girls, I, they were so massive. They had all this merch. I think it was a Chapa Chapa, whatever it's called. Well, a, a chupa, lollipop chupa. sort they of call... thing. Chopper, yeah. chopper, 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 chopper. Yeah, the ones with what the little tic tacky things. No, on. just the lollipop. Oh, lollipop. oh, Jim, yeah. Jim, chopper, chopper. Chipa... <laughs> no, chopper, chopper. Pass me by. <laughs> You've got the wrapper and you chopper take chopper. it off. Chopper, chopper. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. of course yeah. it is. Or maybe yeah. a dog, dog chain. Co you know, like when you get your name written on it. Yeah. Or a sun dried tomato. Or a sausage. I'm quite sure it's the um, it's the lollipop. Which spice girl were you? Ginger, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Yeah. And uh, you were also a fan of Gabrielle. 
love Gabrielle. I still do. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Oh, there is she is. My mother made me one of those eye patches when I could jump to buy us. Oh, I love her so much. And it, was the, well, it was one of her songs. Was the first song I ever sang live. My first ever like standing. It was so embarrassing. But um, I, I took the mic off rather than on at school, and I sang Rise uh, oh, with the school wow. choir. Yeah, and I was singing the lead. And so yes, yeah, she's one of the loves of my life. <laughs> Yeah. And, and Golda, I mean, you're an actor, but you're also a singer. I mean, I music, am, yeah. music has been really important to you. Yeah, absolutely. My mum and dad used to play instruments and sing, and my brother's a producer. And yeah. your parents, I love this, you know, if music be the food of love, your parents, they met through they music. They met through, uh, yeah, my mum was working in Barbados, and um, my dad came for some reason, I can't remember where, but they set up a choir. Oh, wow. And they met singing in the choir. I think we've got a picture of your mom and dad. They're on a plane to somewhere. Yeah, that's their wedding day. Oh my oh, god! Oh wow! That's the day they got married in one oh. of those. And they, they had to get married at like four o'clock in the morning or something like that, because the priest or the person who was doing the service that was the only time that they could do. <laughs> and I know. Busy, busy, <laughs> busy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's at about six o'clock in the morning after the wedding. Wow. Oh. Flying back yeah, to where very happy. they... Yeah, God, they yeah, very they happy. Were, they're gorgeous, aren't they? Mm. So beautiful. And uh, talking of singing and dancing, uh, Jim Broadbent, you are really God's gift to singing and dancing. Uh, you love it. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> no. we, saw, we saw you in Moulin Rouge. You oh, uh, Woo! yes. Moulin Rouge. Yes. Some of the singing I do in Moulin Rouge is my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of it. And did Baz Luhrmann ask you if you could dance before... Yes, he asked me if I could dance, I asked me if I could sing. I said, no, no. <laughs> uh, said, we, can do th we can do things with that. We, <laughs> we can work around that one way or another. <laughs> uh, uh, so it was... Uh, and I, I did cause the, um, the choreographer, Cha-Cha was his name, um, uh, Appropriate uh, him name. Huge, huge pain when trying to. He, he was trying to get me to um, do all these specific steps, which I couldn't do. And I was, he was struggling you know, day after day. And I said, I do do a. There is a sort of jokey uh, move I used to do uh, when I was a student, which seemed to amuse people. And I did it, which is. Oh, uh, just as a. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The jazz dancing move, which I have. <laughs> And uh, I said, oh, we can go with that. <laughs> we can go with that, yeah. So that was the basic, the basics of my... You do that in the open, don't you? Moulin Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> you do, but you do... You, I love Moulin Rouge, I do. You yeah. do that in the open. Everything's going so well. Uh, yeah. When you're doing all that. Yeah, I did it, yeah, you took it. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm doing it. I know yeah. exactly it. Yeah. And Helen, we think... I, I, I sort of can't imagine you're not good at anything, but apparently singing, you're not keen. I'm not good at anything. No, I said you are good at everything. It's not what you said. I was like, you're not good at anything. Ah, yeah. oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, is that a point you I meant to say. Him? I meant to say. I can't imagine. Is that what you being... really think? No, I can't Honestly. imagine you being not good at anything. Is that what I. I don't know why. I don't know. I'm, I'm not I, good I at think you're fabulous. I yeah. Know. Yeah. <laughs> But I am surprised um, that singing... I can't sing at all. I mean, at all. I, I'm tuneless. And um, my, my husband, if I try to sing, he tells me to shut up. When I was, um, <laughs> when I was in the choir at school, yeah. they asked me, please, don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, no. mouth the, the hymns Mine. in the morning. Mouth the hymns in the morning. Just don't, don't make a noise. Putting <laughs> 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 everybody off. Um, and I played a singer in, in a theatre show called Teeth and Smiles. And... And I learnt an amazing thing, which is that you can persuade an audience of anything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and just by kind of shouting <laughs> and being sort of self-confident, um, I could persuade them that I could sing. In fact, I, I really... I wasn't hitting any notes at all, you know? <laughs> it, was, it was horrible. Is that, the show, is that the show where an actual rock star came to see you? Yes, yes, that's when... Um, well, not... Um, uh, Pete, uh, you know, the drummer for the uh, Who. Um, Keith, Keith Moon. Keith Moon, sorry, Keith Moon came to visit. Yes, that's right, yes, he did, yes. Wow. And then, but he... You came to visit and then didn't want to go. 
No, well, well what happened was I... If you, do, shall I tell the whole story? Do you, go it, on. A bit more. Yeah, we've got time. Um, yeah. I'm in my dressing room, waiting to go on for the last scene. And outside my dressing room in the Royal Court is where all the rubbish bins are, right? So I hear this huge clatter and... <laughs> bang, crash, bang, wallop. And I look out the window and I see a pair of legs sticking out of one of the rubbish bins. <laughs> You know, sort of kicking in, in pinstripe trousers. And the, the person sort of gets out of the rubbish bin and I go, oh, my God, that's Keith Moon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's sort of shouting and yelling. And then I hear the shouting and yelling coming through the dressing room and then I hear it coming up the stairs and then, I, and then it's outside my, my dressing room and I hear bang, bang, bang on the door and I open the door and there's Keith Moon standing there. He says, hello, Ellen. Um, yeah, yeah he's, he's very, very drunk. Um, yeah, come on stage with you tonight. <laughs> I'm for my last entrance. I get all rather the theatrical to go, oh, no, no, Keith, I, I, you know, no, I don't think that's a good idea, really. Yeah, fuck it, I'll come on stage with you. I'll be amazing. <laughs> And, of course, oh. it would have been amazing. Yeah. And I was an absolute twit not to say, yeah, come on stage. Instead, I sort of said, no, 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 uh, you know, and, and I went on stage and did my last number really badly, as usual. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and I never shared the stage with Keith Moon, and to this day, I regret it so wow. badly. You know, when you're offered a rock and roll moment, yeah. you should always grab it. Right. You know, don't be frightened. Grab the moment. That is a know. good lesson a for good life. Lesson. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, now, uh, we move on to movies, because uh, there's a new crime caper in town. It's called The Duke, and it stars Helen Mirren and Jim Broadbent. Yeah! <laughs> in cinemas from the 25th of February. And remarkably, this is a true yeah. story. It's such an interesting story. Uh, Jim, tell us about your character. Who do you play? I play uh, Kempton Bunton. And um, this... Uh, the nation had bought the Goya portrait of the Duke of Wellington for £140,000. And then it was promptly stolen. And Kempton held it up for ransom and said, I'll give it back if you give free TV licenses to old age pensioners and war widows. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so he was a, he was a sort of Robin Hood character. And when did this actually happen? In 1961. 1961. And it was, uh, it was actually... He, he hung on to it for about four years, but in our story, it's conflated down into about a few months, just for the sake of the story. But he actually had it for about four years. And so he's sort of a Robin Hood figure, but equally, I imagine, quite trying. You play the long-suffering wife, Helen. Yes, indeed, I do. Um, I've always sort of sworn to myself I will never play any character that is called long-suffering. <laughs> <laughs> But she is. But she is long suffering. <laughs> she is. But she's a great character. She rules the roost at home. Um, she tries to keep Kempton in in line uh, very unsuccessfully, and and they have an amazing relationship. And it, um, our, our director tragically died um, quite recently. One of the great British directors, Roger Michel, mm. famous for many great British films, and this turned out to be his last film. But I think it's considering it's the last film of a very, very great film director. It's a wonderful film to have as his last film because it's, um, it's very funny, uh, but at the same time, it's got great sort of emotional depth to it. Yeah. Well, we've got a clip. Here are the two of you celebrating Kempton's new job. And round about 11, my oh. idea of heaven <laughs> is a nice cup of tea. <laughs> I like a oh, nice cup of tea. Stop it, you daft brush. Anyhow, it's half three. You were a beautiful dancer. Graceful, fluid. It wasn't that good. You were that good. Ginger Rogers of Whitley Bay. <laughs> I always said we should have entered them competitions. <laughs> We'd never have won. Swept the board. Mm -hmm. You're looking at Hollison's new star baker. Hollison's? I thought it was plastics. No. I'm Lord Bunton of the Baps, number two oven man. Much better, you can't eat plastic. So will it be regular? I am sticking to it like a swan of water and a free loaf every day. <laughs> Tomorrow, a pork pie. Pork pie? Slightly damaged. <laughs> You're slightly damaged. Today, 14-ounce Danish. <laughs> slightly damaged. Light and airy for ladies who are watching their figure. Yeah, I'm not, though, am I? You're better off wobbling than rattling. <laughs> <laughs> I like a nice cup of tea in the morning. morning. I like a nice cup of tea like with my nice tea. I like a nice cup of tea in the morning. Oh! Sticky and dancing. 
Sweet Lady and Dancing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, very good accent work. Very good. Oh, yeah. Oh. There was a lot of work went into it, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of horror nervousness. We had a great dialect coach. Yeah, we are very good. Yes, and... Um... There, are, there are a thousand different Geordie accents. Now there's a thousand and one. <laughs> <laughs> Adele, you've never lost your accent. I mean, because you've been in America for a while now. Yeah, I've been there for a while now, yeah, for sure. No, I, I don't know, it's never... no. <laughs> and is it true, <laughs> is it true that Angelo, like, picks you up on the way you th say... He does, but Angelo sounds just like me, by the way. Oh, does like, he? Yeah, so obviously the whole time I've been there, he's been there. <laughs> and um, he goes to school with American kids and sounds like me. Um, <laughs> so, but, yeah, I kind of correct him a lot as well, obviously, but that's not how you say it. <laughs> but, yeah, he does on, on, on like, you know, uh, the word, uh, like, free, as in, like, the number three. Oh, yeah. He's like, it's not free, it's, like, three. Like, you know, he's got a, he's a little bit more well-spoken than me. <laughs> probably because of his dad's. But, um, yeah, we've both still got our accents. And you live there and obviously enjoy living there, but there must be things you miss. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, we, we weren't supposed to live there this long or, like, you know... Before COVID, we used to spend over half our time here. And oh, stuff. right, OK. But then, obviously, you know, I got locked out of the country with... Um, uh, out of, well, if I came back here, I wouldn't have been able to get back there, basically. Yeah. So I was stuck there for most of COVID. But, um, yeah, I mean, I miss, like, British... I, I miss British humour. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our humour is that it just doesn't always travel. <laughs> um, so I find myself sort of having to like, explain my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that much fun. Um, but um, yeah, I, you know, I miss the humour. I miss my family. I miss you know a lot of um, like my condiments. And, you know, I, lo I love a, I love a sauce. Like, I love a sauce. Marmite. Well, Marmite's not quite be right, but like you know, like oh. salad cream and Branson's pickle and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, but I found a store there that does it all. <laughs> oh, okay. Really? Yeah, I did. She's yeah. in. She's Great. in. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and because Ellen, you spent a lot of time in America, and like that, you were there for lockdown. I or was. A lot of it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, for the first time, in, I was just saying to Adele earlier on, uh, for the first time in thirty odd years of marriage. We sat opposite the table opposite each other and had dinner every night for six months, every night. And it was fantastic. Because because of our professions, yeah. he's a film director, I'm an actress, we're always, like, moving around and, oh, where are you going to be in May, you know? Oh, yeah, well, maybe let's meet up for two weeks, you know? That sort of thing, constantly. And finally, we just sat and had dinner together every mm. night and it was brilliant. Had such a good time. Lovely. Yeah, and, but, of course, uh, you were not... You were not always alone. You were in a Tahoe, Nevada, and you had uh, visitors. You had critters come to call. Oh, lot, yeah, there are lots of wild animals around there. Yeah, lovely, lovely to sit and watch this, you know, beautiful wildlife happening in the Sierra Nevada. Incredible, but yeah. big wildlife. I mean, you posted this, mm. uh, this video. I think it's you and Taylor, and a, there's a bear, essentially. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. oh. Wow. I think this guy's asking for some food. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh, go on. <laughs> Helen is not having it. Not on our decking. Not on our decking. I thought you were outside of here. Oh, I, uh, I will be in. Oh, my God. <laughs> go on. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> you better watch out. No, he's fine. You go on. Go on. <gasps> go on, Dad. Go on. 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 Wonderful. Naughty bear! Oh my God. I got a picture of a fox in the garden, but it's not quite as well. You know who loves that video is kids. All kids absolutely love that video. I think they identify with the bear. You know, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm a naughty bear. You know? <laughs> naughty bear. <Yeah. laughs> but, Golda, you will uh, see the bears and up them, cos you had even... Worst visitors when you were a child? Yes, alligators in the back garden. Oh, Did you? In wow. Guyana, yeah. In Guyana, where I was born, we had alligators just come rock up in the back garden. Did you get to recognise them? Were they, like, friends or were they all...? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. They just used to <laughs> come and hang out and then disappear and yeah. come and hang out and disappear. And would yeah. your mother call you in for tea when they were out there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 You, get inside <laughs> <laughs> Shut down. Yeah. <laughs> and, Jim Broadbent, you've never been tempted to move to Hollywood to do the whole thing? No, not really. No, I've spent very little time there. <laughs> and it... <laughs> I don't know why that's that funny. He could move to Hollywood. <laughs> I occasionally get offered American bars and I think... 
There are American actors who are so much more suitable for this than I am. <laughs> so I, I pass, generally. Also, I, I, I don't understand Americans. I... <laughs> I, I would know, wouldn't know how to get under the skin at all, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but I sort of know how Brits work. And, and I've played a few Irishmen as well. I've sort of got a bit of a feel for where they're coming from. But, yeah. But Americans, I just haven't a clue, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, Oddie, you, you, you spent many years really not far from home at all, in Lincolnshire, right beside the theatre that your parents ran. Yeah, they're, they're very... They, they didn't really run it. It's a very... It's, very small local amateur theatre that they put on to, to, to just after the war, really. They got together a few locals and they used to put on quite radical theatre, like Ibsen and Shaw and things. So my first stage performance was actually in the Doll's House as a child. And wow. I can remember we got, I got given a big tin of sweets at the end, so that was... <laughs> a, a <type> <laughs> And we've got a picture of you very young. I think you're playing a strong man. You've dressed yes. as a strong man. Uh, that's... You can see, if you look closely, I've got crepe hair this stuck to my you. chest. <laughs> what are you I've got, wearing? I've got crepe hair and a fake leopard skin cushion cover. Oh, a leopard skin, yeah. Oh. Skin. That's great. Um, and the socks and the sandals. Sandals, <laughs> sandals and white socks, yes, we were strong. But I don't know why, I don't know how I thought that was to indicate strength. <laughs> it's also looking up like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know most of the people on that, in that photo. Oh, oh wow. Still. There it is. Wow, wow. Cool. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so that's Helen and Jim's film, The Duke. It is cinemas from the 25th of February. Uh, now, yes, well, yes, go on. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Golden Rush Bell is back in Bridgeton season two. It comes to Netflix from the 25th of March. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Queen Charlotte, she's a real fan favourite, and there's a lot more of her in this season. Yes, there is. And she's back with a vengeance with all her <laughs> naughtiness and joy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really brave thing, I think, they're doing, because that first season was, as we said, so successful. Yeah. But this season, there's a real pivot and they're focusing on different characters. Yeah, well, Bridgerton is based on the books by Julia Quinn and each book is on um, a sibling of the Bridgerton family. And so our series basically is... has It's an ensemble, but within that ensemble, we have different love stories in each uh, season, which I don't think has ever been done. There's nothing yeah. kind of like that out there. Um, so this time round, it's Johnny Bailey and it's a love triangle and, uh, yeah, we kind of get to see him blossom and grow into, yeah, the man that he becomes. And do we get to see him? Uh, I mean, is it as raunchy as the first season? Um, it's Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and it's about love um, and the kind of escapades that people get up to about so love. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. I think I'm thinking yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And obviously this comes from the great uh, American showrunner, Shonda Rhimes, Shondaland. And one of the things I think people love about the show is the colourblind casting. Uh, was that one of the things that kind of appealed to you about it? That, you know, seeing London being that diverse? Mm. Yeah, I think definitely, you know, you want as actors to be in something that really represents represents the world that we're living in at the moment, and I think that's really, really important. Yeah, I'm very proud, very proud that we're representing, we have diverse diversity, and we're reflecting the world that we're living in. And I, I think I read a thing you said in an interview I really liked, that you said normally <laughs> when you get a part, you're kind of leaning into your dad, and yeah. this is the first time you're leaning into your mom. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I've played the kind of stereotypical black characters. Nothing wrong with that. Very proud to do that. Very proud to represent my dad. But this time round, you know, being a biracial actress, biracial person, um, I have two cultures that I can tap into. And for Queen Charlotte, she's very, very much based on my mother and that side of my heritage. So, yeah, I mean, I was brought up being traipsed around manor houses in this country and afternoon tea and, <laughs> you know, all of that stuff, scones and jams and, you know, all of that, <laughs> you know. So to be able to celebrate her 
yeah. um, is a real, real joy and blessing. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, let's watch a clip. Uh, here you are with Lady Danbury discussing the whereabouts of Lady Whistledown. I yearn for someone fresh, someone unexpected, to turn this season on its head. Mm. That is what we need. There is no room for indifference. Apathy is a blight the monarchy simply cannot endure. Of course, Your Majesty, but remember, a young lady cannot be a diamond until you anoint her as such. So if for any reason you do not find one among the candidates today... Do you think she will return? We have heard nary a peep from Lady Whistledown since last season ended. Perhaps the writer came to her senses. Perhaps she realized taking on her queen was a bad idea and she will never publish again. It is a convincing theory, ma'am. Or she simply left for the country as the rest of us did in the off season, bored by the lack of any real gossip. Hmm. You do know what that would make her then. One of us. <laughs> And here's another odd link. I can't imagine this will ever happen again. We've got two people on the show who've played Played. Queen Charlotte. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Because you were in in The Madness of King George. I was, yes, yes, absolutely. Fee shoes and wigs. Yeah. Remember the fee shoes? I know, exactly. We used to call them the fucking fee (laughs) shoes. And if we see Helen again, as, as there you are. Now, you look fabulous there. Very there's, good there's wig. There's the fichu. Fichu. There's the lacy thing. And your the wig. Thing. I feel like Netflix have invested more in the wigs. <laughs> uh, here's, here's, I mean, is that truck built around your wig? <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Is that car just for you as well? Yeah. Looks of it. That was for you. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That used to rock up every time I needed to go to set. <laughs> wow. Because I couldn't. Ooh, if I was pen. in a car, I had to kneel down. So I would be on the floor like that <laughs> <laughs> with this wig. Yeah. It was a car, but in that I was able to sit properly. And what's in it? Is it dense? Um, it's cages, yes. birds, and <laughs> yeah. worms, mice, and, mice well, and all sorts of things. Actually, we've got a picture Lunch. of you getting ready, and it does, <laughs> it does it looks like a man's <laughs> living in it. It looks like, it looks like you've woken him up. <laughs> that, that's, that's about four o'clock on a very, very heavy day <laughs> of yeah. filming. The thing is, when you wear these sorts of costumes, often you have to get dressed outside of yeah. your dressing room, because yeah. your dressing room is never quite big enough right. to, I to incorporate, get... you know, this enormous thing. And when I did The Madness of King George, we had very low budget so uh, they gave me this little caravan because we were shooting on yeah. set and it, I swear to god it was one of those caravans that I think girls might have used women might have used by the side of the road you know at a truck stop when they wanted to make a bit of money you know had that kind of feel about it oh, it was yeah. like <laughs> didn't know <laughs> It was, like, so manky and disgusting in there. <laughs> and I was supposed to get dressed as Queen Charlotte yeah. in there. So I used to... I would get dressed outside. I'd get dressed out in the open air because it <laughs> yeah, wasn't enough you, room you in there. you can't transport but... you and frock and <laughs> No, wig. no, it's a lot of stuff to work out. It's amazing. Uh, and, Adele, you do do that thing. So you, you, when you bring out an album, you bring it out and you do the promo and you normally do a tour, or yeah. in this case it was going to be the Vegas residency, and then you vanish. Yeah. So, what are your plans for this vanishing? And do you know how long, <laughs> how long you're going to be vanished for? Um, uh, well, well, I definitely will vanish again. Um, but I'm trying to like make a really conscious effort to stop being so anal with my privacy. Like, I mean, say that I'm still fucking private though, so I don't know. <laughs> but I'm trying to not always be two completely different versions of myself because it's exhausting. Like, you know, switching on and switching off and stuff like that. So that's sort of why I'm sort of like, I go out for dinner a bit more now even, which I know sounds pathetic. But, like, what's the worst that could happen? Nothing. You know, so, um, yes, I will be disappearing in terms of my music, but like, you might see a glimpse of me every now and then. I won't be in complete hiding, you know, but... Do you disappear to, like, recharge? Yeah, and it takes me a while. Yeah. Mm. It really takes me a while. Like, you know, it takes me... About three years, yeah, and then I've got to, like, rev myself up to go into yeah. the studio, and then it takes me a good year and a bit to... Finish an album, mm. but yeah, but I, you know, like I said, I would, I would like to maybe have more children. So, 
it'll be up to them, you know, because I only just now feel like I've caught up on my sleep from nine years ago <laughs> when I had my son. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. we'll see, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, good luck with that. And good luck with Vegas when it happens. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. We'll yeah. be there. OK. We'll be there. We'll be there. OK, it's time for music. This Brit Award-winning, multi-platinum-selling musician has been storming the charts since his breakout hit, Budapest. Here performing his current single, Anyone For You, it is George Ezra! <laughs> Just turned 21 And I said, here's my number Hit me up if you're needing anyone And I could be anyone, 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 anyone For you Anyone, 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 anyone I could love, I could be Anything you want of me And in the dark, serve the night Baby, let me be your light I could love, I could be Anything you want of me To me, they mistake this time. And if you're flying over the Serengeti, Tiger Lily, don't forget me the way I am, not the way I was. Mm -hmm. And I could be anyone, 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 anyone to you. Anyone, 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 anyone. I could love, I could be anything you want of me. And in the dark, serve the night. Baby, let me be your light. I can love, I can be anything you want to be. And in the dark, serve the night. Baby, let me be your light. Be your light. Be your light. Anyone for you. I could love, I could be anything you want of me. In the dark, serve the night, baby, let me be your light. I could love, I could be anything you want of me. In the dark, serve the night, baby, let me be your light. I could love, I could be anything you want of me. Jim, Helen, Adele. I love that song. It's like a little slice of summer, isn't it? It just puts yeah, you in such gorgeous. a good mood. Yeah. Fantastic. And that is off the new album, Gold Rush Kid. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's not out till the 10th of June, is that right? That's right. OK, but it's available to pre-order now. Absolutely. Get oh, that in. Yeah. yeah, get that in. <laughs> it, why not till the 10th of June? What's going on? What's happening? It's what just gives? the way, isn't it? And it's like an exciting time because you sit down <laughs> and you go like, well, there's an album, so then there's songs to release, there's videos to make, there's artwork, there's shows. Yeah. And then I go, if it was down to me, I'd leave the studio and be like, who, who wants it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Out of the back of your car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've come close, honestly. And, uh, George, there's an amazing picture of you at Glastonbury, but Glastonbury's not going on. Yeah, there And so are. that pyramid stage, is that there permanently? It's permanently there. Do you know what? I think it's listed as a cow shed. 
Oh. I don't know if that's like a secret, <laughs> but but it's it's got yeah, it's concreted into the ground. Because Adele, you guys met at Glastonbury. We did. Do you we remember? Did? Yeah, yeah. yeah I just Do I remember? I'm surprised you. It was the, yeah, of course I do, yeah, because I remember I kept seeing people eating noodles backstage. I was like, oh, I want some. Mm. We went into catering together. Mm. I was trying to have these fucking noodles. <laughs> <laughs> was, well, you just played, and I was sussing it out. I mean, obviously, I've, I've been to Glastonbury so many times, but like, they kept asking me to headline, and I was like, no. no. And I went and sussed it out, yeah, and you were part of my day there. It's a, it's a, there's like an energy backstage where people are. Equal parts excited to be there and cacking it up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like weird, it's, sorry, it's, my words, not yours. But. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Well, you know, I famously like throw up and shit myself. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that, um, you know, that skeleton of the um, of the stage, like you know, you've, I've, I've been I've been down there before and seen it like that, and it's crazy. And there is something like, and I am as I'm getting older, I am becoming a bit more of a hippie. But there is something so powerful yeah. on that where that stage is. Like there, something happened to me yes. just before. I walked out onto that stage and it was really powerful. And lots of people that I know or I've met that have played at any time during there, uh, you know, during the weekend and stuff, that they've all said the same thing. So it's not as if it's like I'm about to headline Glass and Brits, that everyone is like, oh my God, something's happening, you know? Yeah, it's a yeah, really yeah. special place. George, what's your, you're doing a big live show in the summer? Absolutely. Finsbury Park. Finsbury Park, wow. Very nice. On the 17th of July? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It is 17th of July, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. And you can pre-order things for that, you can pre-order the album, you can pre-order that. The thing is, well, I think we, like... I think you called me out for this last time as well, because I wasn't sure on the specific date, but I genuinely kind of go by a week-by-week -week basis. And also, no artist ever knows okay, when good. anything's happening. Don't I worry think. about it. I'll be there, for sure. I always know when something's happening. You don't know when Vegas is happening. Well, I... <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> that was very quick. <laughs> hey, George, uh, good luck with Fitzgerald Park. Good luck okay. with the album. Thank you for that for George Ezra! <laughs> All right. Uh, that is nearly it. Before we go, we do have time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Where are you from, sir? I'm from New Zealand. Oh. <laughs> of the story. Yeah, and, uh, what, what's your name, sir? <laughs> I'm Henry, but you can call me Fingers. OK. Oh! oh. He's, got, he's, got, he's, got nine, he's got nine fingers. So, Henry, does your story involve your fingers? Possibly, yeah. OK. <laughs> OK, <laughs> great. Here we go. Off you go with your story. All right, so it was my 10th birthday party, <laughs> and... <laughs> So my parents had just brought out the cake, <laughs> I'd blown out the candles and made a wish, and then they let me cut them a slice each, and they hit it off. So they made one <gasps> fatal error, and they left the knife there. Uh. And then so me, with my friends around, 10 years old, naturally I start trying to impress them. So I start playing the knife game. Oh, oh. no! And I've done this a thousand times, no issues. But then I'm so confident and so eager to impress my mates that I let my friends, who's sitting opposite me, have a go on my Left hand. Oh my god. Oh. He doesn't have the same luck I do. He gets four fifths of the way through. Oh, don't. He no, hits me no. Below the knuckle on my ring finger, and I'm left there, sitting there with a knife through my finger in the table. And so, yeah, now I can't get married. <laughs> <laughs> you can walk. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, that was like, that was like a documentary. <laughs> wasn't as lucky as I am. You're not lucky at all, dude. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Uh, we'll be able to do another one. I love it when they fought, when they go home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Here, we go. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Tom. Tom, lovely. And where are you from, Tom? Uh, Chiswick in West London. Chiswick, West, oh. West London, nice. And uh, what do you do, Aren't uh, Tom? Aren't we like in Chiswick a little bit? Hmm? We're in Shepherd's Bush. We're near Chiswick. Bit. We're near you. Not We're too near far, you, Tom, not yeah. too far, Adele. Yeah, me yeah. and you. you yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 and what do you do, Tom? So I work at Heathrow Airport. I oh. um, yeah, work with the flight. I don't fly them, but um, I clean them and uh, put the fuel in them, make them all good for you. Okay, uh, to lovely. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, off you go with your story, Tom. Okay, so growing up, I used to go and visit my dad in a beautiful part of East London, right on the river. Um, and it was a summer Saturday, and we'd spend the entire true. day sort of lovingly uh, restoring and repainting the garden oh, um, fence outside the front of the property. And Coming down the uh, street is a man and his dog. Uh, and and uh, the, do the dog gets to the front of the gate, does that thing they do, call a nature, oh. starts twiddling around, um, and 
what can only be described as the most explosive diarrhea goes all over the gates. I was in fits of laughter, as you can imagine, being an eight-year-old. I turned to Dad, he had a face like thunder. And I said, Daddy, why, why are you so upset? This man, he's just letting your dog pill all over your garden fence. And he says, Thomas, that's Graham Bloody Norton. No. <laughs> go in the red shade yourself. It didn't happen. <laughs> uh, tell your story. You've got that as my website. This very address. Please say a huge thank you to all of my guests. George Ezra. <laughs> Paul Rochevel. Jim Broadbent. Dame Helen Niren. And Adele. Join me next week with singer Natalie Imbruglia. Strictly is Johanna Sodibe. Comedian Rob Beckett, writer and actor Dawn French, Magic Mike's Channing Tatum, and Hollywood Brit Andrew Garfield. I'll see you then. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Dressing Mama Roo. Now there's a daunting prospect. The competition rages on over on BBC Three. RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the World, starting now. Here on One, the rom com of all rom coms, Movie Magic from the Notebook, next.